This is For Better and Worth. The podcast where we don't believe you have to sacrifice your relationship while you build your net worth. We are your hosts. I'm Chris. And I'm Erica Young. And we're so glad you joined us today. All right, y'all. Come on. Let's get into it. Hello, honey. How are you today? I'm doing great. It's been quite a week, so it's good to get back uh, into the studio and have some convo. But uh, I had to mentally prepare myself for this conversation. Yes, we are going to talk about my baby today. And for all the listeners. Look, look, she's not talking about like somebody other than me. (laughs) She's talking about uh, my baby. My baby. Okay, yeah, let's be clear. It's, it's my baby. It's not a human person, <laughs> but it's someone I, I'm going to let you explain it. So, Well, listen, listen. Let's be real, okay? I have wanted to have this conversation with you for months on the podcast. And we finally came to a resolution about talking about my baby. Look, as we jump into this, what I've come to realize is that This is very common, and there are a lot of people out there listening who are like me. So I'm going to just say to start with, all those people like me, throw your hands in the air. (laughs) Fist in the air, people. Solidarity, union, unity. Let's talk about who is my baby. So it's not my kids. I love them dearly. They are my babies, yes. Now, now those are my babies right there. Oh, whatever, whatever. You're my baby. You're like my honey, my husband, my, you know, my boo. Right on, right on. Yes. Um, but the smallest baby in our house. <laughs> and this is. I'm going to try and be nice on this episode. But t- I'm going to be myself. Yeah. Thank you, husband. That's what, that's what the people want is for you to be yourself. Our baby's birthday is this week. So this is like perfect timing. Him. My baby is the dog. And he is a Beagle Lab mix. He will be six years old, and his name is Bear. And you see how my my voice and my tone change because he has a little soft spot in my heart. But y'all already could tell my husband is not on the same page. He would never call the dog baby. <laughs> uh, look, this is why we going to have to go to video because <laughs> I, I'm sitting here right now like shaking my head like this – degenerate like, yep yeah, so dude don't, dude don't produce nothing like he, he gives emotional support <laughs> companionship okay <laughs> boy well look we thought this was the perfect topic because every relationship has someone who was on my side who is not a dog person and someone who was on erica's side who has a quote-unquote baby that is of the four-legged furry kind of baby yeah so it's so interesting how this can be I think this can be make or break in relationships it, it can be very divisive that's the honest truth now we need to back up because in order for bear to come into our home some shenanigans behind the scenes, some trickery and some deception occurred in the house. <laughs> and I think the people need to know what happened. Look, I'm just going to be open and honest with people. This is our what fourth dog. No, no. Is that true? Yes. Oh, Lord. Look, okay. I was trying to be a good father, a good husband. Mm. And, you know, my kids wanted a dog and I went and got this dog. So we've been through... Spencer, who he was a lunatic. Yes, yeah, Spencer needed medication, and that's right. for sure. We had him in Arizona. Mm-hmm. He he needed to be like medicated for real. He, he was he, he was barked at alone. everything on a walk. He was very distracted and anxious. It was a yeah. thing, so, and it was a problem. So let's just say, you know, he he didn't survive the the young household. Yeah, he he went back to you know a place that he could thrive in. Yes. So Spencer, but we like Spencer. You know, he, he made it a few years. You he know, did. And, he and, did. Then we went through Shinobi. We tried Aww. to get a puppy, and Shinobi unfortunately had some. He got sick. She, she had a health issue. And yeah, and we couldn't. It see, was... it, that, Shinobi wasn't your baby because you don't even know if it was he or she. Are you kidding me right now? Shinobi was a girl. Okay. See, yep. you know what? You're the one that didn't know. You, said, you just said he. Okay, but... she. 
Shinobi, okay. okay? See, she ain't need the dog. Shinobi, she need the Shinobi dog. loved me dearly, and I love Shinobi as well. And but she didn't last with us very long. She got ill in her first year, and so that that just did not work out. Right. Now, now, this next one does not count, husband. It technically doesn't. But uh, you, you can't, know. you cannot count a being in your home for less than twenty four hours as your pet. Okay, yeah, that's true. But I was look, people. I was trying, you know, trying to be a good daddy. But you were not in your right mind when you brought us a pit bull mix. Okay. No, nah, it was a poor decision on my part. <laughs> that this was dog, not. That one was not my fault. Yeah, Let me this, just be this clear. Dog has some definitely uh, some. You know, underlying, you know, issues, anxieties that just didn't work out. And so that brings us to today. Okay. So I had to I had to transparently set the table so people could hear that, you know, I am a good guy. Well, but we also have had challenges with our pets. Like no one wants you to feel like you are a bad guy because that's not the, the case. We have in our household had challenges with pets. We have tried many times and. You know, Bear stuck. Let's put it that way. Bear. And the fact that it's going on six years that he's been here, we've had yes. him since a puppy. He should feel very fortunate. He to... he don't know about the previous pets though, husband. Right. Like, but let's let's talk about how he came to be in the young household. Let's 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 go there because I think that people let's talk about the trickeration that took place. It was deception, trickeration, as well as uh. Yeah, it was a lesson to everybody out there. This is not how you do it. No, I agree. I, I'm going to I have to I have to honestly say, please don't follow this example. The warning here is don't do it like we did. My daughter found a shelter. Well, well first of all, I have to say that I said to you did you and our daughter. I said, look, you know, if we would ever ever I'm putting it in air quotes, if we were to ever get another dog. I didn't put a date or time on it. I was like, we should probably consider getting, you know, a puppy and just starting fresh and go through training and do everything ourselves. Thinking ever was like, to me, is a future tense. And what Olivia and I heard was, dad wants a puppy. Let's find dad a puppy. So Olivia, in her brilliant wisdom, at what I think her age at that time was 12 or yeah, she's 13. About 12, 12, almost 13. And she said, Oh, I'm going to go find us a puppy. And so she did her searching and then she pulled me into her behind the scenes research and showed me some dogs that she had found. This one in particular was at a shelter in. Chicago land, which is, you know, three hours from here. And I said, Oh, okay. Uh, why this one? She was like, I don't know. I just felt like this one is the one. And they said that it was a Beagle Lab mix that wouldn't get to be more than 40 to 50 pounds because of the mixture of Beagle, which is smaller than the lab. So that I was, was like, a lie. Well, yeah, we'll get there, too. But so we were like, oh, that's a decent size, you know, not too big, not too small. And and then I looked at the picture. I was like, oh, this little baby is cute. So now I was on I was OK with the 20 to 25 pound dog. Now, you didn't give us, you know, any any yes, parameters around size, all, husband. I told you all small dog, but you were like, we don't want a small dog. So what you will find in this episode is that <laughs> we will be disagreeing the entire time. OK, <laughs> so buckle up, buttercup. This is we do not agree here. OK, he's going to see it a completely different way than I'm going to see it the entire episode. So. Here we are. It's but, all good. So we saw this little guy, and I was like, uh-oh. And so I sent an email to the shelter um, and asked them about the pet. Was he still there? Blah, blah, blah. And they were having an adoption event on a Friday when our oldest daughter had, you know, band, you know, training all day. She had band camp all day. And so she was going to be gone. She wasn't going to be able to be with us. And my husband was out of town. Perfect opportunity to continue our deception, trickery, and um, behind the scenes sneaking, um, you know, behavior. And so my youngest daughter and I, we drove 
to Chicago. Now, this is when you know you're wrong, okay? I turned my phone off so nobody could track us. <laughs> you know you're wrong when you are like, don't try and find me during this time. Don't call me. I don't want you to know where I'm at. When I get back into the city, I'll turn my phone back on. You know it's bad. You know it's see, bad. See, people, I hope you can just learn from us. <laughs> we are being very open and transparent. You know, relationships go through ebbs and flows. And don't deceive your partner like this. <laughs> so then we get there and I'm in the car and I say, OK, Olivia, we're going to pray. And I'm just I'm praying. I'm like, if this isn't right, let's walk out of here without this dog. If it's right, you know, help me to see. I walk in. We see the dog. And they hand me the dog. And I'm like, oh, Lord, this is a problem. I knew instantly that I wanted to walk out of there with that dog. I had already gotten the cash. I knew how much he was. I was like, this is a problem. I started walking around the little pet store and putting everything in my cart. And Olivia was like, oh, my gosh, mommy, is this happening? <laughs> and I was holding the dog like it was mine already. And I hadn't paid them a single thing. Do you remember what his name was? I don't. I don't. I, we had Midnight as one of his names. Frankie. His name was Frankie. His name was Frankie. That was the other thing because I had an uncle named Frankie. And I was like, oh, my gosh, is like this. Oh, goofy Frankie. He. Well, OK. <laughs> I'm sorry. So he, you know, he's he was he I think he was the runt of the litter. I do. But. I'm, it, that's, I'm cool with that because we can give him love, you know. So anyway, so I was. Yeah, overtaken by his cuteness and his sweetness. And he he snuggled into my arm and I handed them the money. And then we were on the way home and I was like, Olivia, what have we done? What have we done? <laughs> and promptly when we got it back into Indiana, my phone, phone turned back on. And you were not expected to be home for two days. And so when we got home, Faith said, I have nothing to do with this. <laughs> That's the wisdom of my oldest child coming through like, uh-uh, I don't want to have anything to do with these lies and deception that you all are out here uh, perpetrating. <laughs> and I won't get into all of the specifics over the, over the two days, the first two days that he was there. But I will say that when you came home with your cousin for the holiday. I, I'll pick up from here. Uh-oh, uh-oh, Lord. Okay, I so remember walking in the house. Me and my cousin. And I saw a dog. I was like, whose dog is that? And then me and the kids all in unison said, happy birthday. As if Surprise. this was your birthday gift because your birthday was like four days later. Right. And when you talk about how did Bear get here, my response at that point is like, this is not what I wanted. <laughs> I didn't ask for a dog. I asked for an Under Armour quarter zip. This is literally, this is. <laughs> The joke for the last six years. <laughs> and you know what, people? I still didn't get the quarter zip. No, no, no. Haven't we bought you a, a quarter zip? Haven't we bought you that? Maybe in subsequent years. Yes. But I didn't get it that year. Yes. I got a dog instead. So I think we laid this story out just to really illustrate the point. Sometimes it comes down to it's me or the dog. And in a lot of relationships, and we have we talk to people who – in most relationships, there is typically one dog person and there's a non-dog person. And it's so funny. We were at lunch with some friends last week and we were just talking about it. And they have a dog. But it was almost the exact scenario. Maybe not how the dog got there, but the husband and I, we were on the same page. Like, this is not what we were signing up for. And the wife was like, oh, but the dog is so cute. Oh, I love this dog. It's like, <laughs> And and you know what is so interesting? I think that we went behind your back because we did not think you were going to say yes and try again. That's the honest truth. That's the honest truth. And so we it's were like, like, you know, it's kind of like baseball, you know, three strikes and you out. Exactly. Three no outs, three outs and, and the inning is done. You know, it's the other team's chance. So literally. And that is what I thought was going to happen. And I was like, this I said, if we're going to have a shot, we're going to have to surprise him with the dog. And the the craziest thing is he has grown and grown and grown. And that dog is not 50 pounds. He is fully 80 pounds. And the vet keeps saying, um, 
he can use lose about five pounds and he's still a little <laughs> stocky self would not lose them little five pounds he lost two pounds and probably gained it back so um anyway he's here he is here to stay and he, and it's you know his birthday week so yay for bear yeah i think I think some people are listening probably like, why are they talking about this? But I think this is more common than yes. you would actually uh, think because in relationships, especially when you talk about pets, I hear about people spending money on pets and, you know, you have examples of that. But it's like it blows my mind because, look, with a pet and our dog, he gets two things. He gets two two uh Two squares and a cot. <laughs> two so square get, meals and a cot, like he in jail two, or something. Two bowls of kibble and, and a cot. It's like, dude, beyond that, we have an agreement. Don't have any major medical malfunctions or breakdowns or, you know, I already, like, feel like he need a job. Do need an income source because pet sitting and vet bills. It's like, bro, you 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 cost money. You What am I getting out of this? <laughs> well, and that's fair. I think... The thing is, is that pets, no matter what kind of pet they are, they're a part of the family. And you have in-laws and you have outlaws in your families. <laughs> I think you might see him as an outlaw. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but there are par- p- people in your family that you like, how did you get here? How right. am I related to you? And I know, of course, you know, Bear is not blood. But he's a part of the family. And so I think that it's, you know... I think it's you know, on the weirdest, brand to have the somebody weirdest like thing that. to me. The weirdest thing for me is whenever we drop them off or if we're going on vacation or something and we have to take them to, you know, doggy doggy daycare. Boarding. Yeah, we have to board them and stuff like that. And they say, okay, who, who who's being dropped off? And I have to say, Barry Young. <laughs> like, that is so weird. That's I'm like, his you last are, name. Like, bro, you are not a young. You a dog. Your name, Bear. I'm dropping Bear off. <laughs> But you know what? Like, he is a part of the family. So so that's the funniest thing is Bear loves you. He respects you. He thinks high- – look, I was about to say he speaks highly of you. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, Rummy. <laughs> no, but he like, loves Like, how did he sound? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, we, we have this running joke, too, that he sounds like Scooby-Doo, which, hey, he might. He might if he had a voice. <laughs> if he had a voice, I think he would be sounding just like Scooby-Doo. <laughs> Raggy, what's going wrong? <laughs> so, but he, you know, he respects you. So he'll do what you tell him to do. And he doesn't give you trouble. He He's he's not the kind of dog. He actually doesn't really get into much, especially now he's not a puppy anymore. You know, he's not grabbing pillows and blankets and grabbing people's shoes like he was when he was little. And so... Now he's just chill. He's like, give him a walk and he's fine. I I will say, like, the saving grace for him as a dog in our household is that, you know, uh, we've taken him through training and he has responded extremely well to training. And he's uh, he's done very, uh, very good with the training. That has been very good because had he not, I don't know if he would have lasted, but because he does, he responded well to training and because he listens and he doesn't get into stuff, I think that has boded well for him because overall he's a good dog. You know, he he listens, he, you know, he doesn't get into things. So I think that has worked out to his benefit. Yes, yes. And, I mean, we do spend money on him, but, you know, I'm the budgeter. And so I make sure that I try and keep that in the budget at a reasonable rate. And really... It's just when we go out of town. So honestly, you know what? If anyone out there in the local area would love to take on a dog while we're out of town, he's a lovely little little dog and save us a little money on uh, boarding fees. I got smart. I just stopped asking how much it costs because I'd be like, I remember the kids set up an Instagram for him and I was like, look, you need to work that Instagram, get him some sponsorships. And I was like, this dude needs some some revenue, some income. I mean, that's the honest truth. He does because he is an expensive, expensive person in the house because we don't have child care anymore. The kid's gone. Right. And so this guy is here and he he needs food and he needs. Look, you if know. you're listening out there and you're looking for a glamour dog. That hey, you want to uh, put into some. No. Some photo shoots or spreads or oh, you need now. some uh, some talent. We'll do that. 
Yeah, yeah. you know, because uh, Bear needs some income. I, he, I he thought you were going to. some uh, revenue. I you thought, thought I was going to try and give him away like normal. Yes. Every time we have a conversation with somebody, he is trying to give the dog away. And what we're not going to do <laughs> is get rid of my pet. So, honestly, though. I think what is really valuable for us to really discuss is how do we make this work? Because it's clear we have two different positions on this, right? And it's clear that you probably would prefer to not have the dog around. Let's just be honest. Look, I will say this. Though I don't, you know, prefer to have a dog, he is here. And so what I want to make clear to people is that I don't, you know, mistreat the dog or abuse them or anything like that, because that would be very wrong to do. And so, you know, I, I, I do take care. Like if you're out of town or you're gone, I take care of the dog, you know, and he hangs on every word or everything that I say to him. And you know, it's funny how if I'm out of town and you call me and you walk, you telling me you walk the dog. I'm like, really, dude, you don't be walking the dog when we at home. I'm well, like, if, if nobody else is here, the dog got to get walked. You right. Know, he get stir crazy. So he be wanting the dog. He wants to walk when mommy's home too by you. Yeah. Well, well, no, he want to walk by mommy. I mean, he wants it from anybody. Yeah. Well, you signed up for it. So. <laughs> <laughs> see, see, here I go. In perpetuity, I gotta be the main, the main parent here. But you know, I go on a walk with you with him sometimes. You yeah. Know, to accompany. Yes. But you know, I think I think the, the the bigger thing here is like because he does cost, you know, there's a financial component. Mm -hmm. And because there's differing points of views, it can have a big impact on relationships. And so how I think we have navigated in this space is, look, I love you. I want you to be happy. I want the kids to be happy. And, and the girls love this dog. You know, though our oldest isn't at home, she comes home and she, you know, loves on them. Or if we're on FaceTime, she wants to, they want to see the dog. They want weekly pictures of the dog and whatever it is he's doing, laying on the floor or outside. Yeah, it's funny, though, like how as he's approaching Six, it's like, I don't know, He's it's, it's almost like he's older yeah. than six because all he wants to do is go for a walk or he wants to go and, and like, lay out. Yeah, he sunbathes. Yeah, I was like, okay, that's yeah, that's weird, but, <laughs> you know, you out of here, you chilling, okay, I'm fine with it. You're not bothering me, asking me for nothing, cool. Yeah. I think one of the biggest things that we've had to learn how to do is compromise. Um, he does shed. He's not huge in his shedding but he does shed so it requires a little bit more of keeping up with our furniture and sweeping and vacuuming and all of that and I think that's a point of contention sometimes because you know you I I see I see a singular hair like what is that hair doing there right nitpicking let's yeah. let's be real honest well, well I don't see it that way of course I mean, you don't I have <laughs> I have stellar vision. Just oh for my who, gosh! Just after those you, out there, you after know. you got the surgery, you have stellar vision. Yeah, well, you know, I had LASIK in two thousand five, but I still have twenty twenty vision, so <laughs> I can read your mind most oh, times. Oh my goodness! I see all the I see the hair, and though it's not a lot, you know, it just it bothers me. So when you talk about compromise, I did not set the expectation that you would do everything to clean up and care for them and vacuum and sweep and this. And I do think that we, you know, we have to do it on a regular, you know, uh, basis, but I also took upon myself some of the things that were bothering me to just handle that. If I saw hair in places that I didn't like it, then I just vacuum it up, you know, because I think that helps my peace of mind and my peace of mind helps in our relationship. And so when you talk about compromise and to people who are out there listening, Though you may fall on one side of an issue, and this is only one issue that we're talking about, but this concept works in every issue. If it bothers you, you should do something to address it versus solely expecting your partner to do something to address it. Now, your partner should be invested in trying to mitigate or minimize that issue so it can help you, but you can't put the solace only on them to do it when you can take some actions as well. And I think that's definitely helpful because the truth is you didn't ask for this, right? So Wait, 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 wait. Say that again. I know. I know. I know. You didn't ask for it, right? All right. You all heard it. It's on, it's on record now. <laughs> but you 
you know, definitely um, is the word acquiesce or. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably the word. And um, and in some ways you have embraced him. I think, you know, there are times when, you know, we have to regroup and say, OK, what's needful here? How do we, you know, revisit this topic and all of that kind of stuff? Because, yeah, he's he's he he requires work. He is he's basically another child who needs supervision and <clears throat> needs to be taken into consideration and he will behave better if we take him on walks and give him said attention. So, um, yeah, it requires us to regroup. So I, I definitely think that we have to, um, you know, sometimes have other conversations where we're like, okay, at this phase in the game, what's really going on here? Um, and you're right. That's probably one area that you're not looking at on the budget as, as deeply. And I'm thankful for that because, uh, yeah, it's expensive when we go out. As I well. mean, it's, look, look. Let's let's be realistic with it. This is practice for other areas, you know, because there's other things and issues that arise in relationships that have a component that can impact the relationship, but also there is a component that can impact the finances, which thereby impacts the relationship. Yeah. And so, though this is one example, which I think a lot of people deal with, because. I mean, I'm surprised at how many people have pets, not yeah. only just dogs, but, you know, they, they've got p- birds and cats. And right. You have a coworker that has, like, what, yeah, 10 one different of, animals? One of our, one of our uh, vice presidents, I was surprised. He said they had, it's like Ronald McDonald. <laughs> they, they got, like, 10, 15 different pets. I was like, oh, my God. So, you know what? You, so, you should consider our household a blessing, honey. Oh, my God. They got, they have- like, four dogs and... Like seven cats and snakes and <laughs> groundhogs, <laughs> you know they got all kind of stuff. Yeah, so you know what we only wanted one, you know. It's, uh, so that's a blessing. That, that that just wouldn't have worked for me. I'd have been like, look, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't got to say it's me or the dog. I'm, your boy is gone. <laughs> so I want to talk about what value they actually bring because one of the things that you consistently say is he need a job or he's a degenerate or <laughs> I only say that cuz like all you do is lay up. That's true. Lay around, sleep and eat. But what value does he bring? So, I will be so through the pandemic, I had said over and over again he saved our life. He let, he saved my life because first of all, he had to get walked. And so he forced us outside and into nature and all of that. And then also, I feel like, I mean, yes, he did develop anxiety during that because he wanted to be with us all the time since we were all here all the time for months on end. But um, that's when, like, he would just sit with us. He would sit with the girls. I mean, it was like this. He was already a part of our life, and he helped us, I think, emotionally. Now, he might not have done a whole lot for you, but for the three of us, that dog helped. He well, helped. look, I mean, helping you all helps me, right? I love that. I love that. And and really, that's really the reason why I have compromised and was willing to just deal with the things that whether I was a pet parent or a pet person or not, I was willing to just embrace it because, you know, I love you all and I want you all to be happy. And if it helps you all, then it helps me. And, you know, I give them dirty looks sometimes, but... <laughs> You know, he, he don't want that smoke. Yeah, that's for sure. We got a friend who jokes about what he's saying. Like, yeah, behind the scenes, bear, 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 acting like, listen, listen, it's, I'm, I'm gonna take your mess one more time. That's what, that's what a buddy of ours says. He's like, bear, gonna try to bite you one day. I hope he doesn't. He's right, not. You he's, bite the hand that feeds you. You out of here. That's right. He's a lover, not a fighter. Yes, I do. I do believe that. He is like, oh, daddy, I don't want no problem. Right. He backs up. <laughs> he backs up. Right. Even even if I do tend to the one the one time I do play with him, he's like, uh, uh-uh. uh. I'd have had enough. Uh, yeah. Uh-uh. I'd have had All right, enough. Dad, uh-uh. You you play too much. And you know what? What the funniest thing is that he does with you is. When you are about to pet him and you have your hand out and and you say sit, he goes all the way down like he's bowing down to the king. <laughs> Literally, he gets as low as he can to the ground because he knows who leader of the pack is. 
He knows who that is. He knows that you are a leader of the pack. And so he gives you that respect. And then when you pet him and everything, he's like, this is the best thing since sliced bread. I love you, Dad. You're amazing. And he turns over on his back and he's like, here's my belly. And he literally. I think it's funny how when I when I'm slow to pet him, how he kind of moves his head. Yes, he's like, my let head. me let me get let me get my head closer <laughs> to your hand. Are you gonna really pet me? Look, look, I think it's one of those things where where you have to just uh, continue to remember that the dog just wants to be cared for, and wants to be loved, and so in remembering that, I try to you know pet him once in a while and. You know, I take him for an occasional walk. But because, like I said, you know, I, I care about you all. I just, you know, by default care care for him. You know, we continue to buy I continue to buy him dog food. You know, we continue to pay for boarding and, you know, the general medical care that he requires. So before anybody tries to send any hate mail to the better and worse, <laughs> you know, the dog is taken care of. The dog is happy. So is. keep your mail to yourself. And he is man's best friend. He would love to be your best friend, husband. Well, I told you there was a there's an instance <clears throat> where he and I could bond. Okay, let's talk about that. What does that look like? Well, I told you we need to like buy some property, you know, a few acres with some wooded areas. So then I could get, go buy a side by side razor, and I let him jump on there. Then he and I can go out and kind of do outdoorsy woodsy things and you think you're the the main character in Yellowstone is that what you think is going on no no not that I mean I'm not looking for like you know 200,000 acres <laughs> I'm just looking for a, two or three with some wood so we could go just be outside you know he is a a, a lab beagle they want to be outside that would I think that might give us an opportunity to bond so yeah yeah. Maybe I should just find, you know, a few acres of property and then build a house. Then we could do that. There are some wooded areas in, you know, in our nearby places. You can just take them out there and y'all can pretend. No, that's not the same. <laughs> that's not the same. Sorry. All right. So, husband, how do we make it worth it when it concerns our pets, our little furry family members? Well, I think the way you make it worth it is, one, realize that this a decision that you make can have relationship and financial implications. And I think the pet that we're talking about in this example is just that it's an example, because I think in any case you have to assess, you know, is this a relationship impactor or is it a financial impactor? And with this particular thing, our pet, it impacts both. And I think the way that I was able to make it worth it was I was one able to compromise and see the greater value beyond just the impact to myself. And sometimes we really don't have the ability to step back and see the value that something can bring to someone beyond ourselves because we live in a society, let's be honest, where everybody is focused on themselves and what's best for them. And so if we take into account that there's other people, other feelings that are involved, and then we do that, I think that's how we can... um, actually make it worth it and I think that having a pet is always worth it (laughs) but no 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 I will say I will say um Bear kind of made it worth it he became he's a good dog and I think you know we could have been at three strikes you're out and the fourth one we would have just not done it again I think if he wasn't some you know if he wasn't the kind of dog that kind of you know, meshed with our family and meshed with you in particular. And so thankfully, I believe he's worked out. And thankfully, um, I think that you do need to be sensitive to what your partner's needs are. And, um, you know, that has been a journey. That has really been a journey. And he's, he's, he's still here because we have continued to try and compromise and make it work for each other. Look. Though it worked out in our case, yes, I will warn people not to just go and do it because <laughs> this can be something that could, you know, take a relationship off course. It could take your finances off course. Yeah. Because there are monthly expenses associated with the dog that if you're not financially in a place or a situation where it makes sense, you need to really assess and count the cost. Because if you make a decision 
and it brings relationship pressures and then it brings financial pressures, that could be where it is not worth it. That's true. And I, I agree with you. And I think that um, some things are worth it and some things are not. I think in our case, at this phase in life, it is definitely worth it to me. You probably would say something different, but we've been able to make it work. How about that? Look, look at this point. I'm not trying to get a dog away. Uh, though, <laughs> Hallelujah. Though, a, though I may solicit takers. That is on record as well. Thank you, I mean, husband. I'm going to keep asking people. If, if somebody say yes, I might, you know, work out some terms. No, 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 no. Mm-mm. Nope. I think it's funny also how nobody else can talk bad about the dog. Don't let other people do him wrong or, mm-hmm. you know, he went to daycare or he went to, you know, boarding. And I was like, he's been over there getting bullied. I'm yeah. going to have to go see some of these Cause he, dogs. Because he come back limping because he didn't play too hard. I was like, I'm going to have to go see some of these dogs. What y'all do to Bear? <laughs> like, listen, I'm the only one that can, you know, give him a hard time. Right. Like, I don't put my hands on him, but, like, y'all not going to put your hands on him either. Yeah. I was like, Bear, what's up? Somebody do something to you while you were there? <laughs> but, you know, I think the point, it, it remains, you know, don't bite off more than you can chew. That's good. Now, that's a good make it worth it. Thank you. I love it. Well, this has been awesome. Thank you so much for coming to the table and being willing to have this conversation. I appreciate it. I think there's hopefully a lot of value for those that have listened. After the hundredth time of asking me to talk about it, I I was like, I said, I give up. (laughs) I relent. Here we are. And so until next time, people. We're out. Thank you for spending some of your time with us today. We appreciate all your support. So be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us wherever you listen to this podcast. You can find us on Instagram at For Better and Worth. And sign up for our email on ForBetterAndWorth.com. Till next time, we're out of here.